Peace and light, my good people. This is a perfect example of pure cognitive dissonance. You don't know what cognitive dissonance means? The simplest definition is that when you're presented with facts that goes against what you already accept and believe, you choose to ignore it anyway. Cognitive dissonance. Now at the end of my pig taboo video, I explain how the book of Leviticus was written before the book of Genesis, which is why Noah was told and instructed to take unclean animals. But if you're going to take this chronologically as history, then you have to say, how would Noah have known what a clean or unclean animal was since the rules and laws, or as this person says, the commandments of unclean animals hadn't been told to man yet? As a matter of fact, when you read the story of Noah and the flood, when he got off the boat, the Bible says, says, not me, this is the Bible saying. And God said to Noah, every animal, every creepy thing on the ground, every animal that breathes and have the breath of life shall be food for you. Just as I have given you every green thing on the earth as food for you. Now, doesn't that sound like a contradiction? If he took unclean and clean animals on the boat, but yet tells Noah that I will give you every animal and every creepy thing that crawls on the earth for food just as I've given you all the plants of the field but then tells you they're an unclean animal. Remember roaches are creepy things on the ground as well but yes I know in Leviticus it tells you certain bugs you shouldn't eat like locusts but it didn't say anything about them damn roaches. You see the problem with belief is that when you have such a strong belief in something and actual facts from your own book are presented, you will make up a reason in order to stay within your own belief. It's cognitive dissonance. The other aspect of this statement is the fact that he said that for God's chosen people. Now here's the problem with God's chosen people. Now I'm a father of three children. I love them all. I love each one of them. Although I love them differently, my love for them is equally given. So how can a good God look at one child and say, you're my favorite over the other children? That's not good parenting at all or good Godding at all. You see, because people think that they are God's chosen people is why the Israelites right now are just walking up to Palestinians and just taking their land saying that God promised this land to them. And it's not even the God that the Palestinians believe in. Is that right? When you think that you're God's chosen people, you can take people into slavery and think that you're doing well with it because you're following God's rules and laws and grace. A good father would never create separation between his children. 